I think every auto engineer has a piece of gear that they really want but can't have. Whether it's because it's rare and they can't find it or maybe it's too expensive for their budget right now. Or maybe like in my case, it hadn't been invented yet. I started mastering in 2008 and I really, really wanted analog dynamic EQ once I started getting into hardware. But there was only really those BSS units, you know, the one rack unit ones with the little fiddly knobs that recall would just be a complete nightmare. Plus I think the filters are pretty dirty on them. Um, and then there is the uh, Tomo Lisa, which is a really expensive unit made in Germany. I think it's like 25,000 euros. And that was just out of my range. Uh, when I saw these goalie units come out though, I immediately bought them because I've been waiting for like a decade for dynamic EQs. They're made by Gustav Grinderslev, who has been renowned in the DIY community for a really, really long time. He's had huge contributions to DIY audio equipment. And so you know he knows what he's doing and he really spent a lot of time working on compressors specifically. So you know the dynamics are gonna be refined, you know that the audio path is gonna be pretty clean and low noise and have decent headroom. And so I just bought them knowing that they're gonna be awesome and I wasn't disappointed at all. What we have here is the dynamic shelving EQ, which is a low shelf and a high shelf with a high pass filter and a low pass filter. And then we have a dynamic parametric EQ that's called the dynamic asymmetrical EQ. Um, the asymmetrical has to do with how the Q changes, whether it's in uh, boosting or gain reduction, which actually creates a really organic kind of movement to the sound. Let's move on to a close up of these and we'll talk over the controls and the features of the units. Okay, in terms of features, these four knobs are the same on all of our filter sections. And the way they go is attack, release, dynamic control, which is a combined ratio and threshold. And you'll notice that it's a concentric control here. We have a rough adjustment and a fine adjustment on the outside. And then we have our makeup gain. We also have a soft and hard knee setting on all of them. I mostly use the soft setting, but sometimes you need some extra jam and the hard can really come in and save the day there. In terms of your frequency selection, they are here and here on the shelving EQ, and we have 10 frequency selections, which is plenty I find for the application of the shelving EQ because our shelves have a really like kind of mellow slope. And so, you know, it's having a specific frequency isn't necessarily as important as the DAQ, which has an extremely precise frequency selection tool. We have a dual concentric control with two full ranges. So we have a blue range that goes from about 17 hertz to 153 and a red range that goes from 96 hertz to 833. And in between those options, you can select fine frequency points with our outer concentric control. Very, very cool. We have a Q control on the DAQ here, which goes from a very tight 0.1 octaves to six octaves. And we also have a sidechain emphasis control. Now let's talk about the sidechain in these two units. So the way it works is we don't have the sidechain mirroring the actual band that we're using on the EQ. Instead, he's kind of uh, split our spectrum at about 800 and something hertz. And the bottom just reacts to that half of the spectrum entirely on both units. So even if I have this set at like 40 hertz, it's still gonna react to the entire signal up to 800 hertz, which seems like it might be a problem, but ends up not really being a problem most of the time. Now for the DAQ, we do want things to be a bit more specific. So Gustav and all of his genius has added this sidechain emphasis control. Now what this does, it, it still takes that signal that's like 800 Hertz and down for the low side and 800 Hertz and up for the high side, but it adds an EQ band that we can boost narrow or wide at any of the frequencies basically that we have available. Now that's useful if you wanna make sure like you're grabbing just that frequency and you're not having something else influencing it. Or even more cool is let's say you wanted to, um, I don't know, duck the mids, like say the 400 Hertz with the kick drum. You could have the EQ set up at 450 Hertz and you could have this set up at like 80 Hertz to be triggered by the kick drum. So you have like a lot of usefulness right there. If we wanna hear how we're setting up this sidechain emphasis, we can use the momentary sidechain listen buttons, uh, which is very, very handy. You'll notice though, that if you hold this down and you change our frequency control over here, that this doesn't 
change. The sound doesn't change at all. And that's like I said, because it has a fixed side chain unless you're boosting something right here. Now this low mid side on the DAQ has a particular and cool feature called decompression or decomp. Now how this works is it takes the voltage control signal from this side based on how you set it up with the timing controls and everything. And it sends that signal over to our high mid side as an, expans as an expansion signal. So whenever this is compressing, it's gonna be expanding this side, which can be very useful for adding life back to over compressed material um, or creating interesting rhythmic effects or just making uh, the this side kind of sprinkle some fairy dust when the on, onto the highs when the lows are engaged. And it actually works like really well. Like I had my doubts that that was gonna be something that sounded musical and natural, but it almost always does. And a really, really cool thing about that feature is you can set up the low mid side to expand the high mid side while it's disengaged. So you can set this up specifically to expand this side, but not have it in the audio path, which uh, makes it even more useful. With all that said, let's go and actually hear how these units work.
So you can tell from those sound clips that we have like a ton of applications for these. I could make clips for 10 hours and not run out of things to show you. So very Swiss Army knifey type units. Sound quality is fantastic. Let's get into some actual pros and cons. So uh, the biggest pro for me is just the level of precision that this thing has been designed with, both in terms of uh, the control resolution, how finely we can set everything up, and secondly, in terms of how well everything is made, like all the switches just feel super precise and solid, and there's no like weird wobble on the controls or anything. Everything is just really, really nicely set up. Another pro, of course, is the sound quality. The compression action is really smooth. The EQ filters sound really nice, even on their own. And uh, just overall, the sound quality is awesome. The specs are also quite good. We have a respectable headroom, no issues with distortion, really. There's some color on the DSQ, but it's not extremely stream and it's pretty nice and you can always run the gain a little bit cooler through it if you want to clean it up a little bit. Um, in terms of cons, there's a few. The biggest one is that they're discontinued and you're gonna have a hard time finding one. Uh, another con is that they are not three units tall, they're like 3.2 units tall or something like that. So we can't fit these two into six spaces, we gotta fit these two into like seven spaces. So be aware of that before you get it. Another aesthetic thing is that I don't like the glossy finish on the panel. It gets dirty really easily. And uh, I prefer a matte finish, which the new units have. Um, another con is that there's no uh, out gain. There's no makeup gain or like, you know, in or out gain. And I would like to level match these things to compare them accurately. If you have a mastering console, that's not so much of an issue. In terms of other gear that serves this purpose that you could buy, there's the BSS unit I mentioned before, which isn't really suitable for mastering, although if you're a mixing engineer, maybe it would be useful for you. There's that Tomo Lisa that's really expensive. I can't really comment on how it compares because I've never tried it. Um, but another unit that does compare to these is the Magneto Dynamic Infundibulum by Giraffe Audio. And that is not a dynamic EQ. It's a soft clipper that you can specifically clip, you know, uh, narrow frequency ranges with and it, it can be used for a lot of the same thing but only really to tame lively material not to like enhance lively material like you can with this so i would say that these more or less stand alone in terms of their price point feature set and uh, what they offer you for mastering processing but there's a really really great alternative to these considering that they're discontinued another unit by goalie the Cross Comp EQ, which I also have in the studio and I'm also doing a review on, which will be posted in a few weeks. And it is not discontinued, it's in production. And it's kind of like a distillation of these two units down into a two rack unit. Uh, I wouldn't say it's stripped down, it's not stripped down. It's, it's uh, maybe a little bit less thorough in its feature set, but it does kind of all the same things. And it does a couple of more things as well. So you're definitely gonna wanna tune into that review and see what you can buy from Goalie uh, in terms of dynamic EQ. So all hope is not lost. Thanks for watching the video. Please leave a comment, ask a question. If you want me to do a follow-up video, I'm always down for that. Just let me know what you wanna see and uh, I'll put one together later. Thanks for watching, cheers.